Imagine a world where a simple sip of a fizzy drink could cure all of your ailments. It may sound like a fantasy, but what if I told you that this was once a reality? What if I told you that the world-famous Coca-Cola was actually created as a medicine? Yes, you hear that right. Coca-Cola was once marketed as a health elixir, and it was believed to cure everything from headaches to depression. But how did this happen? How did a carbonated beverage become a medicine? And why did it stop being one? The story of Coca-Cola's journey from a medicine to a soft drink is one that will leave you surprised and intrigued. Coca-Cola was founded in Atlanta in 1886, just one year after the American Civil War ended, causing a nationwide depression. The U.S. economy grew rapidly in the following decades. There were two industries in the United States that were particularly developed during the war, and for a long time afterwards, one was the news industry. People needed to know about the progress of the war every day, such as who was winning. Because this information could only be obtained through newspaper. Newspapers were extremely popular at the time. However, people didn't have much money during the war, so who would buy newspapers? In reality, newspapers industry made money not by selling newspapers, but by relying on large financial backers. This was the pharmaceutical industry, which made a lot of money during the war. People are injured during the war, and with so much instability, if people's living standards were low, they were more likely to become ill and require medical attention. Therefore, the pharmaceutical industry, which invested heavily in newspapers, was the most profitable. At that time, the front page of the newspaper was the only place for news, and the rest of the pages were all advertisements for the pharmaceutical industry. There were all kinds of miraculous drugs, such as drugs that could make you taller, drugs that could grow you hair if you were bald, and drugs that could make you sleep if you are sleepless. With so many drugs, in order to stand out, false advertising was necessary to boast about their efficacy. Of course, the government did not have time to regulate it. The result was that there were false advertisements everywhere and no legitimate ads. People hoped that medicine will bring them health and happiness. Coca-Cola was invented as a medicine in the late 1800s in Atlanta by an American chemist and physician named John Pemberton. Before inventing Coca-Cola, Pemberton was a well-known doctor who had created at least a dozen best-selling medicines to treat insomnia and loss of appetite. Coca-Cola was his final and most famous invention. He claimed that the drink could treat anorexia, fatigue, headaches, depression, and a variety of functional disorders. Dr. Pemberton insisted that his advertisements were not unrealistic and that the drink was truly effective. Experiment results showed that people who drank Coca-Cola could quickly recover their physical strength and mental alertness, as well as relieve headaches, lose weight, and maintain their health. Coca-Cola at the time contained two very important ingredients that Dr. Pemberton had extracted from coca leaves and cola nuts. Cocaine was extracted from coca leaves, and caffeine was extracted from cola nuts. This could explain why the drink increased alertness while also suppressing appetite, which could help with weight loss. Cocaine was not a prohibited substance by that time, so it was a common ingredient in beverages. Caffeine was even more common and can be found in drinks such as coffee and tea. What is purpose for Dr. Pemberton to create Coca-Cola? He was a Civil War soldier who was severely injured. He suffered from headaches after the war and had to rely on painkillers to survive. As his condition deteriorated, his doctor informed him that he had only a few months to live. So he wanted to use his medical and chemical knowledge to create a miracle drug to save himself and, by extension, the world. Coca-Cola was this miracle drug. Dr. Pemberton still died at the age of 57, just two years after inventing Coca-Cola. When he invented Coca-Cola, he called it Pemberton's French wine coca. Why did Dr. Pemberton want to put cocaine in this drink? In fact, people in the United States have been eating coca leaves since ancient times. The earliest record can be traced back to the Inca Empire in South America. The Inca Empire planted a large number of coca trees and fed the leaves to slaves. After eating the leaves, the slaves became very energetic, worked very hard, and didn't need to eat much food. Later, southern U.S. plantation owners used a large number of slaves, and the American Civil War was fought over the issue of slavery. These plantation owners also gave coca leaves to their slaves, 
and one of their daily meals included these leaves. After eating the leaves, the slaves became very energetic and could work all day without becoming tired. At beginning, it was primarily for slaves. Later on, people began to experiment with coca leaves, but they didn't eat them directly. Instead, they extracted the ingredient and mixed it with red wine. This drink was a favorite of many famous people, including Thomas Edison. People didn't realize this substance was poisonous at the time, so they thought drinking it would refresh their minds. As a result, they recommended drinks containing this coca leaf ingredient, and now we know that Coca-Cola was not the first one. This ingredient was also found in many other drinks. Following the creation of Pemberton's French wine coca, which contained cocaine, the effects of the drink quickly spread, and it became a well-known medicine. A year after Pemberton's health beverage was invented, an important partner named Frank Robinson renamed it Coca-Cola. What is the meaning behind that? Coca is the name of the coca tree, and cola is the name of the cola nut. So the name is an abbreviation of the two caffeine-containing ingredients. Robinson changed the name from health beverage to Coca-Cola to make it more memorable. He'd also created the well-known Coca-Cola logo, which hasn't changed in over a century. Actually, Robinson was just one of the people who purchased the Coca-Cola formula. Pemberton, knowing he wouldn't live much longer, sold the formula to many people and made a lot of money. But he died soon after. Robinson was the most important collaborator, and he created the Coca-Cola brand. After renaming the beverage Coca-Cola, Robinson met another businessman named Asa Candler. Candler, who suffered from headaches, drank Coca-Cola by accident and immediately felt relief. He decided to purchase the Coca-Cola formula from Robinson. The purchase was completed in 1891, and then Candler established the Coca-Cola company. The entire acquisition process took four years and cost $2,300, which is equivalent to $50,000 to $60,000 today. So Robinson made a lot of money. After that, Candler aggressively promoted Coca-Cola and made even more money than Robinson as a result. He went on to become the mayor of Atlanta. After he stepped down as mayor in 1919, his children sold the Coca-Cola company to others for $25 million which is equivalent to five to six billion dollars today, to the opportunistic Ernest Woodruff, who then handed over management to his son Robert Woodruff. As soon as Robert took the office, he declared loudly that he would make everyone in the world drink Coca-Cola. In order to push Coca-Cola into the world, he'd established an international market development department within the company. But how easy would it be to market this medicinal tasting drink to a global market where people's eating habits and tastes differ. Robert insisted that as long as the unique flavor of Coca-Cola piqued people's interest, it could change people's original habits. As a result, before entering the international market, Robert made a daring innovative attempt. Coca-Cola vending machines were introduced in the domestic market, greatly expanding the sales range. Customers could purchase Coca-Cola to drink at any time and from any location. This strategy was extremely successful. However, following the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, the United States entered World War II, and various industries and the economy, including Coca-Cola, suffered severe setbacks. How can a refreshing drink make people happy during a war? Regardless of where our military eat is or how much the company costs, we must ensure that every soldier can buy a bottle of Coca-Cola for only five cents, Robert said. Although this was a good idea, when Robert met with Pentagon officials, he was ridiculed and mocked. How much of a difference could a bottle of soda make in terms of morale? This was a ridiculous idea. Undeterred, Robert immediately returned to the company and assigned someone to write a promotional article with photos of soldiers and the phrase, complete the tough fight and enjoy a good rest with Coca-Cola. This was printed and given to each soldier. Within two years, the military consumption of Coca-Cola reached 5 billion. Not only that, but these soldiers also acted as living advertisements, bringing Coca-Cola to various parts of the world. Coca-Cola became not only a refreshing beverage, but also a necessary item in daily life. People from all over the world, including Southeast Asia, obviously fell in love with Coca-Cola. 
This is considered the best endorsement by the U.S. military. As a result, Robert decided to capitalize on his company's success and expand it internationally. Robert devised a new business development strategy, utilizing local resources and personnel to expand Coca overseas cola's markets, earning the title of local chieftain, and officially embarking on an international journey. Local companies were established, with all employees and managers being locals, and funds raised by locals. The head office had no major expenses or expenditures to worry about, and it quickly provided concentrated Coca-Cola syrup, while all equipment, materials, transportation, and sales were handled by locals. Robert required foreign subsidiaries to pay a deposit in order to ensure uniform quality. Robert took advantage of foreign people's admiration for America or their enthusiasm. And while expanding overseas markets, he not only did not pay any fees, but also received a substantial deposit. His use of business strategy had advanced to an extraordinary level. Robert assembled a team of expert-level professionals, including psychologists, sociologists, psychoanalysts, and advertising personnel, to create ingenious image advertising for each Coca-Cola product. Until 1955, when the 65-year-old Robert officially announced his retirement, he continued to participate in major company decisions as the company's largest shareholder with 3.5 million shares. Even in the 1980s at the age of 90, he had a significant impact on the Coca-Cola company. Coca-Cola's success has always been defined by the spirit of never stopping progress and striving for excellence. If you like success stories, please subscribe, smash a like and turn on the notification. Your support will be my motivation. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.